Euphoria by Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, Glow by Glorilla. Million Dollar Baby by Tommy Richmond. Burn by Kanye West and Ty Dolla Sign. Saturn by SZA. Mm. Oh my God, that's what I should have put instead yeah. of get it sexy. Yeah, what up, y'all? Welcome back to another Stereo Vision video. What's good? Not episode 107. I know, right? It's we, not a podcast episode. No, it's not technically a podcast. We have a very special, special segment for you guys tonight. We're going to be talking about the best songs of 2024. I think it's a not surprisingly good year in music, but I think we've kind of been on a lull the last couple of years. This feels like the best year we've had in a while. Oh, yeah. I would, I would call it a surprisingly good year. It feels It's like a 2016, 2018 2024 you yeah. know what i mean it's, it's one of the best years that we've had in a long time that's a very 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 and high it, it's just getting started like we've seen what's come out in the last two weeks mm -hmm. it's literally just getting started this is a really incredible year so far and uh full disclosure so we're releasing this the like a couple of days after new don tolliver new no worries um, yeah new lucky just for transparency it's you know 725 on june 16th 2024 um, we've only had, what, three days, mm -hmm. if that, with those new projects. Yeah. We've only had two weeks with uh, the Iris Star album, one one week with the Thames album. Yeah, yeah. You so know, so uh, recency bias is a thing. It's good to get that out the way. It's definitely a thing, but I think that we've definitely all given our first reactions to all these. First of all, check them out. Make sure you know, fuck with the channel, subscribe, and mess with your boys. Um, but I think that all of these albums on first listen have been pretty good too. It's been a great year for first listens. Yeah. So I think that I, I'm excited to get into it. I want to hear what you guys think. I think we might have similar lists. Do you think we're going to have the same type of shit? I think we're going to definitely have overlap for sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think, I feel like the top end should be similar. Damn. damn. I feel like there was, there was right answers, but we'll see. You feel like there was right answers. We'll see. I hope I don't mess it up. Yo, if you want to listen along to all the songs that we mentioned in this video, hit the little link up here. We made a playlist including all of our picks so you can go and, you know, maybe check out some of the songs you haven't heard yet. You know, really do your research before you watch this video and get in our comment section. Garrett. I'll start it off. Um, these are my top 20 songs so far of 2024. Starting with number 20, um, I've got Hell of a Ride by Nourished by Time. Okay. Um, honestly, uh, a new artist that I, I, you know, became familiar with this year. Really cool, experimental, like indie rock from, U from the UK. It's a really great song. I was mostly impressed with the production. Um, just like the the piano that goes throughout the whole track just holds it down and it's a really unique almost nostalgic sound so I, I, I've i been loving that song this year Sadiddy by Junie is number 20 yep I think we've all obviously known about Junie I think he's been part of that resurgence of, I think he's from the DMV area but mm -hmm. I don't know something about this song just grabbed me the first time I heard it it's on Memento Deluxe which was already a really really strong project but kind of just the somber tone of it while he's like having this kind of like upbeat kind of frantic flow it's like he's kind of talking to the people who have doubted him bitches who have left him shit like that so I'm, I was really impressed with that starting with number 20 probably a surprise to most people but I'm gonna put Trey the Truth and Ibiza by J. Cole I think off of the project Might Delete Later by J. Cole, this is a standout track to me. Um, honestly, that project was pretty lackluster and it gave uh, pretty poor, bad mixtape vibes. But this song was a standout with the soul sample, uh, the sample with uh, Trey the Truth at the end, the music video that they dropped was gas. And like, I think that J. Cole has not necessarily dropped very like prolific and well-written songs as of late but this was one of the better ones so this is stand up from him you know i shit on j cole a lot but obviously he's a goat i just want to give him his flowers for this song i've been listening to it a lot this summer so i'm so happy you said it because i almost put it on my list yeah i think that that beat is easily top three rap beat of the entire year yeah and cole has a great flow Crazy. on that do i wish drake had a verse instead of cole yes at 19 i have black and blue by vince staples nice um off dark time overall just a really incredible album it's kind of hard to pick one song i agree from the project on here but black and blue kind of seems like the one that um the one that's been sticking with the most people me included um vince is just so 
laid back. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's really gotten good at that. Matter of fact. Very matter of fact, very laid back. Um, he's someone you want to listen to. Just by his tone, it sounds like he knows something that you might not and that you might be able to pick up a little game from listening to him. Um, the instrumental is incredible, as are most of the instrumentals on this on this tape. Um, yeah, Black and Blue, great song. My number 19 song is On The Way by Lucky. It's the intro to his new project, Gemini. Spencer, you saw how I was kind of freaking out about it as soon as the shit dropped. Yeah. It's probably my favorite genre of trap rap, if you could say it. Him, V's, it's that kind of like drugged out, weird beats. You really don't know what they're saying the first time you hear it. It's a lot about the production. Yeah. I think that this very upbeat, triumphant production is very symbolic of what the whole album represents. And I think that that's why I love that he started with that. Just super high energy, him talking him shit, talking about like, fuck what everyone else is saying, like I'm already rich, I proved all that, now I'm just doing this shit for the love, like I genuinely love it. He sounds like he's in a good place. My number 19 is This Sunday by Future and Metro Boomin. Mm. Wow. I previously was unaware that Future wrote Feel No Ways. Me too. And I feel like in terms of the whole like rap battle situation and, and whole like rap civil war, this to me might have been the most powerful messaging because whether or not he did it purposefully, he kind of undercut Drake completely by putting this deep cut on this project because I'm sure other people weren't aware that he wrote that that song. And it's like, dude, Future wrote one of your best songs ever. You know what I'm saying? And the way he performs it himself is incredible. Mm-hmm. So it's like, when we're having the GOAT discussion, who are we really put in top three if some of your best songs aren't even written by you? So I don't want to make this about Drake. I do no. think Future did an amazing job with this song. Um even though, um, you know, We Still Don't Trust You does give like demo and mixtape vibes, I do feel like this song is a very strong uh, single and cut from the project and I want to give it its flowers. So I'll put it at number 19 for my top uh, singles of the year. Um, number 18, I have Skrr by Mike and Tony Seltzer. Yeah. Um, it was off their project Pinball, which to me is Mike's best work. 100%. Um, I, was, I, I was super impressed with the project and this was kind of the pinnacle of it. Just Mike sounding smoother than he's ever sounded because he's always going to talk shit and talk about really interesting things that you want to hear but to hear him sound so cool over this like funky ass groovy ass beat like this song was incredible the project was incredible it sounds like he might have found a true pairing with tony seltzer like i think that worked super well throughout the whole 25 yeah he actually, like, I didn't know he was 25 years old before this album came out. I thought Mike was a 30 plus year old man. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like old and like just rapping like his heady raps. But no, that's a young nigga, bro. Yeah. And it came through a little more on this project. He was having a little bit more fun. My number 18 song is Burn, Kanye West, Ty Dolla Sign off Vultures 1. Yep. This album was a moment when it came out. I think that there were certain tracks where Kanye really... Threw it back to the Kanye that we all love. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All falls down the soul production and that all is on this. You know what I mean? There's other tracks that could have been on here. Like a Back to Me was definitely one of the ones that I thought about. But I don't know. This ignores the bullshit. It feels like he's just rapping and having fun again. Ty obviously kills it on the chorus. I love how he starts off the song. But oh, yeah. Yeah, this this made me feel nostalgic. I think it was the best thing on that album. My number 18 is Acknowledge Me by Doja Cat. I do mm-hmm. think um, the Scarlet Deluxe did leave a lot to be desired. I think there was some cool cuts, like obviously the song with ASAP Rocky and Tizo were cool too. But I think this is probably my favorite song from the deluxe in terms of just like, you know, like lyricism, but also over a beat that is like catchy and easy to listen to. Um, I do think Doja Cat is probably top three female rappers of our generation, or maybe of all time right now. And it's like... Oof. Of all time? <laughs> Okay, I guess, sorry. <laughs> we're, we're going, no, 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 we're, past that. we're going like Lauren Hill and all that. My, my fault. <laughs> I, I gassed it a little bit. But definitely top three female rappers of our generation. I think she got to be acknowledged. And yeah, this is my favorite cut off the Deluxe Project that I feel like didn't get enough play. I was so. a fan of the Deluxe, actually. Yeah. I was too. I think I might have might like that more than the actual project, like those songs but yeah oh, that's crazy so but yeah it was definitely it was definitely good that's that's a great song and she and she was actually like i feel like airing out like problems with her relationship type shit exactly. where we've just really seen her like be super like um defensive of her man and like you know happily like in love like even on scarlet you know what i mean there mm-hmm. wasn't that much um she didn't really get into the problem so it's yeah. cool to hear that on the deluxe different and much needed perspective at 17 i have human sacrifice by childish gambino okay. um it was the song that he added um when he turned 315 20 into atavista this year 
Um, and not Littlefoot, Bigfoot. Not <laughs> Littlefoot, Bigfoot. That one had already been out. <laughs> Ill- ineligible for the list. Human Sacrifice. You know, if you're a Gambino fan, you've heard that song for four or five years at this point, floating around as a demo. So to get it in its full mixed mastered form and for it to like really, you know just be better than I thought it was going to be when it came out as a studio version made me super happy. Um, it's probably one of the most triumphant, just like danceable choruses of the year. And I really like the way that he builds in and out of the verses, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not as cohesive as some songs, you know, like just flat through, but there's like very clear ebbs and flows, very clear waves throughout the song, which I think is cool. And yeah, that that turn off the lights, we shine brighter in the dark, like that that hook is incredible. My number seventeen song of the year is Illusions by Jalen and Gonda. This is one of the songs that grabs you as soon as you hear his voice come in, like instantly. It's yeah. like throwback vibes. Not many things give me dare I say like Stevie Wonder even a little bit like it's just very very old school music but his voice is super super impressive it's Mm -hmm. and it's a great message you know what I mean illusions of a life that I never knew you know just very aspirational applies to a lot of different things great writing but fuck all that like this is just an incredible voice on display honestly and I had to I had to acknowledge that my number 17 is Levi Jeans uh, Beyonce and Post Malone I do think as uh, Cowboy Carter has aged I don't know if I like the full body of work as much as when I first heard it not to say that it isn't great but when you compare it to Renaissance I do think Renaissance gives you a few more cuts that um, you know I listen to my day to day and you know go back to whereas this one not so much, but I do think Levi Jeans uh, is an unexpected Post Malone feature and really complements the whole venture out into country Americana music. Um, obviously, just like a nice, easy song to listen to. Yeah, I, I, I put it there because I definitely wanted to acknowledge the Beyonce project on my list. At number 16, I have How Many Miles by McGee. Um, I've been a big fan of McGee for a while and this project is without a doubt his best. It came at the top of the year and just instantly started this great year in music. Um, and how many miles to me is kind of just, um, it's a great first track. I think if you want to understand what the project's about, it's a great place to start. And I think something that makes him super special is I think he's maybe the first guitar player to have a really distinct sound since Steve Lacey. Mm-hmm. Um, in my opinion, so um, to hear him kind of do something new um, on that instrument where we're not really getting a lot of that, you know, it's pretty difficult to have a signature sound on an instrument. You know what I'm saying? Where you're, it's not your voice. It's not as personal. So um, I think, you know, people that like, you know, um, experimental new guitar playing are definitely very interested in what McGee's going to do. But overall, just a really great, really emotional, really beautiful song. Um, at number 16, I have Offline, Young Miko and Fade. I think that's how you say his name, right? Um, I really started hearing about Fade first with Boobaloo and Rema. And then obviously he had the song with Blast. So I like how he's really lending his... Is he a producer as well as an artist? I believe so, yeah. Okay, so he's lending his production and his also really, really strong voice to these different people's tracks. And I think he's just had a great end of 2023, start to 2024 but oh my God, young Miko. Shout out the yeah. homie who, uh, Jeff, you put me on to her music. I would have never known. Her uh, Rookie of the Year, I think is the name of the, mm-hmm. the project. Crazy, bro. Her yep. voice is so dope. And it's like the song builds slowly and she's just kind of talking her shit a little bit. And then Fade comes in right as it starts to drop. And then from there, they're handing it off seamlessly the whole time. Like, I don't give a fuck like who's even talking. Like, obviously, I don't I don't know what's being said. You know, I don't speak Spanish, but that shit just makes you want to move and dance. And it's the it's the way she's saying things. Like it sounds very hungry. You know, what I mean, you mm-hmm. can tell that she's young in the game and trying to like come for other people's spot, really. Yeah, yeah. I think I don't know about specifically on that song, but Young Miko comes off to me as like super like raunchy. Like she's always like talking shit and is always kind of on some like, you know, like talking about women and talking about girls and all that type stuff. So I I think it's a it's an interesting edge to like like a young woman artist that's coming up. Bro, um, she could be saying some crazy shit on that song, yeah. and I would have no idea. She really be rapping too. <laughs> I wonder she's what dope. I'm endorsing right now, but yeah, listen to the song. <laughs> My number 16 song is Yeah Glow by Glorilla. Oof. Nice. And I think... Forgot about that one, actually. I should have... Me too. I think we talk about moments in music, right? I feel like this song is not only a very well-rounded, very well-written song. It's accompanied by a dope music video. And it's also a moment in time for Glow. 
I feel like we talk about how she was kind of cooling off previously. We weren't sure about what the future of Glorilla's career was going to be. And I think, yeah, Glow, to me, uh, signifies kind of the turning point where she kind of fights back a little bit. It's yeah. like she makes an anthem for herself and for her fans. We're not going anywhere. You know, we've been through all this adversity. And it's kind of started this rollout into a really dope era for her where she has you know, a string of singles and now an unreleased snippet that's going crazy that fans know word for word. So yeah, Glow symbolizes that to me. It symbolizes a moment in her career. Um, and really her like fight for the top in terms of just like female rap, but rap in general. Yeah, you know? Glow. Nah, yeah, she Glow. fought back. She definitely fought back this year. She she was not going to go down without a fight. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I feel like people are definitely trying to throw a little bit of dirt in her name. And she's she's definitely came back with a couple of hits. Um, at number 15, I have All to Myself by Future Metro Boomin' in the weekend. <sighs> I'm so glad you put this. Yeah, this is just an incredible song. Um, this is another one where it was very, very difficult for me to pick a, pick a track. Right? I, I thought about this Sunday. I thought about this one. The intro is super dope. There's a bunch of songs. Um, but this is just like instantly from the moment the song starts it's just glittery you know what i'm saying it's like beautiful and to hear the weekend like throw the some disses bro throw some, the, the, fire. it's the prettiest diss i've ever heard in my whole life <laughs> and the, it's just a very easy song to play it's like a it's like a sunset song for me and those are always the most profound my number 15 Definitely cheating a little bit here, but it got officially released this year. Oh, it's you did the same thing with Human Sacrifice. So on the radar, Concrete Freestyle or a Concrete Cypher. Oh, um, okay. Is mm -hmm. my number fifteen yeah, song you can have of the that. year. That shit from the moment I heard the raw bone uh little saxophone. Shouts out the gang, shout out Vikram. Um, it it grabbed me. Yeah. I, it kinda kicked off this era that Yachty's kind of continued into the year and I think that it's definitely an interesting sound for his young artist to be getting on too mm. Caribou obviously had the biggest moment of her career thus far with her verse at the end of it which is incredibly fire but everyone else did their thing honestly and it kind of was an introduction for the first time everyone having their moment kind of solo front facing in front of the mic like okay who do we really fuck with Who's our favorites? What do we like about each different person? How mm. are they different? It shows the diversity in styles because they don't approach it the same way. Yeah. yeah. I love it. It gave them all a chance to shine and, and really showcase uh, who and what Concrete Boys is. Facts. Yeah. Facts. I definitely think that that was a great representation of it. Yeah. My number 15 is Getting With Me by Boss Man D-Lo. Okay. I feel one I like put. this song to me is funny because I feel like it started off um, with memes. Mm -hmm. And I do think, you know, there's nothing new necessarily about getting money rap, player rap, hustle rap, that type of stuff. But I feel like Boss Man D-Lo's approach to it is what is so compelling for him. Like, first, the the tone of his delivery is super, uh, you know, engaging and fun. But I think also he's got some lyrics that are just, like, kind of funny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what, uh, he talks about she's on the 15th floor eating hibachi or something like that. It's like, what, bro, what are he's you talking about? He's a professional about? shit talker for sure. Mm -hmm. I feel like playing pickup basketball with him, you probably hear some crazy bars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I think... It also kicked off a little moment for Boss Man D'Lo and, and really gained him some steam in the industry to the point where he's building up uh, a very loyal fan base and people are excited for his his next releases. So, you know, shout out to Boss Man D'Lo. At number 14, I have Walk On By by No Worries featuring Earl Sweatshirt. Mm. Um, this is one that I've only had for a couple of days, but I, I don't see how this isn't going to end up on my year end best songs list. Um, I am a massive Anderson Pack fan, and he can be a lot of fun, goofy, playful. But when he gets serious and and talks about some shit that sounds like it really hurt him, or he's just really fully, you know, diving into whatever they're writing about, I think that's when he's at his best. I think Earl was a perfect like uh, partner, someone yes. someone to partner with Anderson, and because they had, the they had, they had never worked before, mm -hmm. but like it just made so much sense and. Uh, Earl's verse seemed really also just kind of I don't I don't even know how to describe it man it's just it's just really powerful music I think when Earl also like I, I don't know this production is just so new for Earl I want to hear him on more things like this you know what I mean more like wave this is more accessible obviously but yeah wavy like a um, r&b inspired you know? I mean, right it when it started you said some rap songs but good yeah you know I like literally like, I was like because uh, because this is this is the music you like you're like smoking a joint on the beach alone, like walking at sunset, just really thinking about shit. Yeah, but it's you know not what like, I mean? It's less like, yeah, it's not bad thoughts though. 
Oh, no, no, no. You it's, know, like deep thoughts. It, it's deep thoughts, but it's it's at peace. Yes, it's at yes. peace with itself. It's not necessarily good or bad. You know, it's a it's a powerful song. My number fourteen song of the year is "Forever" by Tim's. Guys, I came in here and I was hating a little bit. I I I was honestly just so infatuated with the Iris Star album. This Tim's album grabbed me something crazy over the last few days and it was honestly after you guys had such high praise for it i was like okay maybe i'm missing something mm-hmm. this song is the perfect blend of my favorite type of r&b ever brandy keisha cole early 2000s r&b with obviously how amazing Afrobeat is i don't i actually don't know who produced this song but they were the star of the show and then tim's vocal performance is amazing while she's talking about this kind of relationship kind of situ like she's just meeting this person do i want to be with this person her intelligence shines through because she really like stops and pauses in the minute of falling for this person she's like is it just desperation for you and for me you know what i mean like with like i don't know i love the way that she talks about love throughout the whole project this was probably a high point for me just because it was so upbeat and accessible while being deep my number 14 is Fisher by Cash Cobain and Basswag. Wow. I would have thought you had a higher. No, I'm, I'm putting it 14. I still think that, you know, the duo and the whole sexy drill movement has a ways to go in terms of really becoming um, not necessarily a movement, but establishing itself in the industry. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like this is a moment for the whole movement, right? Because I think it brought Cash and the whole scene to a higher visibility and a different level. And it really primed them for the summer and for the summer takeover that has begun and will continue to go. Uh, I think this song is unavoidable. I feel like you hear everywhere from the internet to the club to, I don't know, wherever you're at, maybe even at the gym. And I feel like it is catchy and you just can't get it out of your head. It's stuck there. So uh, I would have put it higher, but I do think the movement has a ways to go. So, yeah, that's my take on that. Definitely one of the catchiest songs of the year. Yeah, mm-hmm. spent yeah. a lot of time in my mind. She she got an attitude, but she better song. song I'm mad at you. Great song. Another song that was stuck on my head for honestly the whole year so far. Um, number thirteen, I have Toro by Remy Wolf. Okay. Um, it was it was my favorite of the the singles she's dropped this year, which all sound incredible. Um, it was close with Cinderella. You know, I was I was debating which one should go, but Toro to me is insanely fun. It's super like it's super groovy. You know what I mean? It, it's like some funk guitar, but honestly, the drums steal the show. Like it's some of the most interesting, like pop drums I've heard in a long time, especially on the on the hook when it just really picks up. Um, and Remy is Remy is infectious. Infectious is an understatement for Remy Wolf. You know what I mean? Like she is just seems like a ball of sunshine that makes your day better when you put her shit on. So I, I really love this song. Yeah, I don't know the song like that, but that is how I would describe Remy Wolf. She wearing like overalls and shit. Oh, yeah. happy as fuck. Yeah. My number 13 song of the year is For Certain by Party Next Door. If you knew me, right after this song came out, I took any and every opportunity to play this song. <laughs> I was addicted to it because I love Party when he gets on that little island R&B vibe rather than like, obviously I love the Toronto sound. That's mm-hmm. his signature sound. Very like, deep slow ballad you know what i mean obviously very sexual but this is more lighthearted. this is fun this is outside but it's also like day party and nighttime pre-game it fits a bunch of different situations and it just kind of makes you feel good it's another thing that makes you want to get up and move definitely the strongest thing from p4 terrible album cover still though <laughs> yeah that album cover mm-hmm. is gonna age so poorly i feel like I, it did I'll, I'll, yeah whatever <laughs> <laughs> whatever I think it did what it needed I think the to music do in terms of advertising. <laughs> I think the music would sound better with a different cover. I swear. I really do think that. There should be an alternate cover. Yeah. For sure. By now. You know, everyone got it. Everyone saw the ass. Let's keep it pushing. My number 13 is Made For Me by Money Long. Um, it was interesting because, Miles, you actually put me on to the song. Not because you told, like, I hadn't heard it before you told me. Yeah. But before, you know, it was kind of just up on TikTok. And yeah. I was like, oh, I keep hearing this. Like, I'm not... This is annoying, you know? And then you were like, yo, Money Long actually is an amazing writer and might be, you know, one of the biggest R&B stars of I think she's our be generation. Best new artist. Best new artist. That's what you said. <laughs> he loves blowing shit up. No, no. But if you... If you, you said Money Long is the best singer ever. No, but if you... <laughs> Money Long is your go, right? <laughs> if, you, um, if you listen to the song, like, very well-rounded, very well-written song, but she can really sing too i think that i was kind of taken aback at how much i liked it when i actually went to listen to the full version um even the version with mariah carey which while it was unnecessary i do understand like 
if you're an uh, emerging R and B singer, like you, that's go. That, yeah, that's that's go status. You want you want to get that cosign. I think Money Long is super talented and has you know a ways to go in the industry. So I wanted to include her on my list, and I've been listening to Made for Me uh, for probably the past month. You be listening to like when, when, what's your setting for Made for Me? This is just like driving around music to me. Nobody knows. <laughs> sun, sun, sunset, bro. Sunset, man. In your fields. Leave, leaving Spencer Miles' house just wondering <laughs> Nobody what, it, what it all means, bro. Hey. <laughs> Where have you been? <laughs> Number 12, I actually have For Certain by Party Next Door as well. Nice. Yeah. Um, you know, you kind of said it all, but it's, it's probably my favorite new song to throw on at like a pregame. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's very easy to play around people. I think the, the island vibe matches his sound perfectly. You know what I mean? Like I like the dark shit too, but I really think this was like so much fun. And just honestly, like kind of seeming like a timeless party song that we got this year. And I meant like party, like function song. You know what I mean? Like this yes. is like a, like, like a perfect outside song. Um, and I don't know how many of those we've we've gotten this year. So yeah, for certain is number twelve. My number twelve song of the year is "Get It Sexy" by Sexy Red. Oh, I knew you were gonna. <laughs> you knew you were gonna <laughs> say that, sexy. and you don't believe it either. That's the worst I, part. I'm not mad at that. You know why I say that? Why? This is one where I'm factoring in the outside world a lot, because everybody and their mom, white, black, brown, whatever color you are, you love Sexy Red at this point, especially this song, women especially. And I would be lying if I said that every time it comes on in the spot. I'm not saying the whole part. I think it's well, you know. I think it's actually a really I think it's a really clever song from Sexy Red, right? Yeah. Because she uses her name, right? But the term get it sexy is universal. It's like it can be used for a hundred percent. Like you could be out with a group of friends and like that could just be like the anthem for the night. You know what I'm saying? Like I think she was really clever with that song. Makes so. you feel a little sexy. My number twelve is Today I Did Good by Gunna. Um I think in a world of Getting money music, in a world of twerking music, in a world of sad boy music, in a world of negativity, mm. Gunna delivered with an amazing cut about doing the best you can in a given day. On um, his Larry June. Huh? On his Larry June vibe, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's on his Larry June vibe, yeah. I think this was a amazing song by Gunna. Honestly, a much different subject matter than I'm used to hearing from him. But I think when you look at the music and the lyrics and you look at Gunna's lifestyle as of late, I feel like it translates. You know what I'm saying? He's been in the gym working on his fitness and health. Uh, yeah. And I personally just like this song because I think it's really positive and uplifting. And I think like from Gunna, that's what we need. We don't need more like in the streets music. We don't need more club anthems from him. We need a different perspective on the rap game because I feel like he is through everything he's been through, like that's what he's got to be talking about for real. At number 11, I've got Euphoria by Kendrick Lamar. Mm. This was just Kendrick literally dismantling Drake for six minutes. Um, I think we all agreed that it was probably um, the best actual just display of rapping throughout the rap beef. Um, and it's Kendrick. You know, I was listening to it today, today and I'm like, wow, this is an incredible song yeah. you know what i mean it's not just like a fun diss with all these like twitter quotables but this is like a great kendrick song with a super fun instrumental and just so many like real like memorable lines so i, I love you for you that's my 11 they that's tried to say ball. that kendrick stole lines from twitter do you believe that no he was just trying to I, I don't believe that either i don't know why that became a thing i also think that's also like part of what he was trying to do you know what i mean like we all are thinking this it's not just me you yeah. hear i know you hear the rumblings yeah but i'm what the culture's feeling <laughs> um spencer's what the culture's feeling. i'm what the culture's feeling <laughs> um my number 11 song of the year is calypso by bryson tiller um this is a song that got me absurdly excited for the album i think that when this dropped and then i go back and i hear things like outside i was like oh this might be best project of the year obviously another one where the album cover kind of throws me off a little bit but this song is the exact type of thing i want to hear when i'm in the club when i'm outside if i'm not listening to some like rap shit you know i think anyone could move to this men and women alike bryson is at his best when he's on these type of incredibly like there are there are there really like high value like you know expensive beats. Yeah, it sounds like people are doing a lot on them. Definitely nothing is chill about it. It sounds like big budget R and B and Bryson really shines through on that. Great yeah. writing too. Yeah, that's a fun song. Don't let Miles fool you. He's not outside. <laughs> a body like Calypso. He would never hear this because he's not outside. 
Just keep it pushing. You know, am I supposed to respond to that? Yeah, no. See, I'm staying consistent. My number 11 is Last Heartbreak Song by Iris Star okay. and Giveon. Okay. I really wanted to include a cut from the Iris Star album, and mm-hmm. I find myself going back to this a lot. I think that I miss Giveon. You know what I'm saying? I think that I do too. we haven't heard I agree. music from him in a little while, and it was kind of surprising that this was his first uh, re- re-entry into... I guess the industry, you know, after really like good. being being silent for so long. But it is a really dope ballad by both of them. I think Ira displays incredible like vocal ability on this by by singing this ballad with mm. Giveon and you know, standing next to him and not feeling like you know, the I guess like smaller player if you will. 100%. Um was, go. I think it's like really good writing um and I think it's relatable to anybody. Um, and I, I really enjoy the song. I really enjoy this cut from the project. I would have never expected it. Like, yeah. it was very, very smart for both of them to do because I didn't know Ira could be able to stand low the singer, like you said. But, like, Giveon, I would have just never thought on an Afrobeat song ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's a really interesting play, but, you know, it turned out to be a really great song. So, glad to include it on this list. At number 10, I have Cards on the Table by Nia Archives. Uh, this is probably my most played song of the year. I have been obsessed with this song since it dropped. Um, to me, it's just like a really like feel good anthem. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's some shit that like talks about like being young, enjoying your life, like not making everything about work, but like remembering like w- like how how much fun this shit is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like a summer daytime anthem for me that I that I love to run to. I love to drive around in my car to. It just makes me feel real like aligned with myself and confident in what I'm doing. So I love that song. My number 10 song of the year is Ira Star and Asake, Goodbye Warm Up. I too had to include something off this album because it's one of my favorites of the year. Obviously, if you guys were on stream with us, make sure to tap in with us on Twitch. Me and Osei heard this and I lost my mind Mm. instantly. It's just very, very upbeat, high energy. Ira sounds aggressive on every single song on this entire album and this is the one that really got me turned up for real like i think it's track number three so you just kind of lock mm-hmm. in and you're you're going from there and um yeah ashake does great but the energy is just very it's palpable from the first time you hear the beat drop my number 10 is attitude by don Tolliver, charlie wilson and cash cobain chose to include this in my top 10 okay. because i think this is where the sexy drill movement has peaked so far we've got really? don Tolliver, yeah. who's an amazing performer uh, over a sexy drill beat and really capitalizing on the fact that, you know, obviously Cash Cobain, you know, he does his, his thing too, but, you know, capitalizing on his production and his sound and elevating it to the next level. I think the Charlie Wilson feature is an amazing surprise and adds like another layer to the whole, like the whole thing, bro. I think sonically, this is an amazing song. Probably the best sexy drill song I've heard ever. At number nine, I have Love Me JJ by Thames. Okay. Um, it's one that continued to grow on me since its release. And at this point, it's just my go-to, you know, sunny day song. You know, like the first thing I'm throwing on when I'm on my way to the beach or, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful morning and I'm walking to get my coffee. You know what I mean? This song makes me feel really good. Um, and I think it also is a really good showcase of Thames' voice. On this project, I don't think she ever tried to do too much. You know what I mean? I think she she really backed off when it was necessary and kind of fit the vibe of each song perfectly. And I think um, she really demonstrated that on this song, which is one of the singles. Overall, just an incredible song from an incredible artist. My number nine is Million Dollar Baby by Tommy Richmond. We are in the midst of Osei's favorite thing ever, the Virginia Renaissance. And I think that he has definitely claimed he's the spearhead of it. He took Ose? this. No, no, not him. Oh, <laughs> my bad, my Tommy bad. Richmond. <laughs> Ose is right next to him. I'm right? a top 10 player. <laughs> uh, I agree, I agree. I'll stand on that. Um, but what Tommy does on this song, I think is highlighted by what you said the other day when he kind of showed someone what their new favorite genre is. Mm-hmm. This is something that isn't a virality play. It didn't feel like something that was manufactured to be a TikTok hit or have a dance to it. It just seems like really fucking great music with people who have been working together forever and they finally broke through. Yeah. And it just so happened to be in the high, like to the highest degree. I think that we're starting to see a little bit of hate on it. 
And I think that the fact that it took this long for anything like that to even surface shows just how universally liked the song is. My number nine is Third Coast by Tizo Touchdown. Okay. And I definitely wanted to put this a little bit higher. I think there's a, a lot of incredible music that I do need to put first. But, bro, this is this is Tizo's best song to me. I mean, it's like, I think Tizo to me is still trying to structure the like unique sound that he is building right and i think he's so versatile and has so many different pockets he can go into that you know he's still climbing to find that i think third coast is an amazing represent representative of that like it's like literally three different songs with three different beat switches and vibes and he kills them all yeah you know i think it showcases his versatility i think his vocal performance on that is absolutely insane um and i think if he makes more music like this this will make him a top 10 artist of our generation. I, I strongly believe that. I think he already has the cosigns. I think the music needs a little bit more work just to be refined. But I think Third Coast is the direction that I want to see him go in. Yeah. Uh, my number eight is also Third Coast by Tizo Touchdown. Wow. There you go. So we'll just, we'll just keep the conversation going yeah. because this is a fucking amazing song. And this is his best song. Mm -hmm. This is his best song. And if you want to show someone what is to love about Tizo Touchdown, you play in this song because it's, it's everything. Mm -hmm. The way that he layers his voice on the first segment and kind of gives you like, um, kind of like a Southern hip hop feel, you're like, okay, he can do that. And then on the third track, just kind of the beautiful falsettos that he's kind of been known for when he sings those uh, as like background vocals on a bunch of different people's shit, you know? So I think it really shows all the different facets of Tizo that make him so interesting. Mm -hmm. The instrumentals all hit. What's your favorite section of that song? Because baby got that water. Yeah, a four door? Yeah. I, that's mine too. The second part? It, 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 yeah, it, yeah, it's fire, bro. It's so fire. Yeah. My number eight song of the year is Inside, Don Tolliver and Travis Scott. Because that's where Miles is, inside. It's his anthem. Doesn't go outside. <laughs> so Consistency. Nah, stairs at a wall. Gone, Consistency. Now that we've gone past the negativity, <laughs> I do think this is a very personal pick because is reminiscent of early Travis Scott to me. It does give me the vibe of an impossible, of a Marie, I'm drunk, the starting part of it. Like that very just slow down psych rap. The production is obviously great in terms of the beat, but the vocal production with Travis and Don on the song shines through crazy. Like it really is part of the beat. It's an easy listen and it almost makes you feel like you're dreaming a little bit. You can put you in a trance. Yeah. My favorite music from both of them complement each other so well. I love that they work together. My number eight is Annabelle by Shibuzi. And I wanted to pick a cut off of Shibuzi's album. I feel like this is my favorite and the most well-written song. I feel like cuts like East of the Mat and uh, Steeler for me also are top contenders. But for me, this is just like a, a beautiful Americana soulful song. And yeah, I think Shibuzi's album was dope. I feel like obviously the blend of like country and hip hop sometimes can get a little bit just like, you know, you got to do it tastefully. I feel like sometimes it can veer a little corny, but I think Shibuzi does it so tastefully. My number seven is Burn by Kanye West and Ty Dolla Sign wow. off of Vultures. Um, just like from the first time I heard it, I knew this was going to be one of the best songs that came out this year. Um, Ty, first I want to talk about Ty. Because he is honestly what makes this song so special with that, your body's like, like the wild, wild, wild west. west. <laughs> and then it's just a really a classic Kanye instrumental. And we get a great Kanye verse. If he wouldn't have said the line about dying of gout, it might have <laughs> it might have been even song number six. You know what I mean? But that was the only bad bar. I really like what he said about like I heard R. Kelly in the next Balenciaga ad. You know, throwing a little yeah. shade at Kim, throwing a little shade at R. Kelly. You know what I mean? Being playful, being Kanye. My number seven song of the year is "Not Like Us," Kendrick Lamar. This was not the not the start of the beef. Not maybe the one that really made us all start tweeting and texting, but this finished everything. Mm. This deaded the entire conversation. This was the only way that I think Kendrick could have ended it because Drake always gives us slaps. He ended this man's career, called him a pedophile, has niggas screaming all this crazy shit, and it's a West Coast anthem at that after all the shit that Drake was kind of shooting at using Pac, using Snoop. like He responded to everything it felt like that Drake said throughout the entire beef, 
in a clever way and made it very entertaining, very upbeat and true to himself and his people, I I don't think he could have done anything better. Wop, 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 wop. That fucking oh my God, lean on you niggas like another line of walk is my entire favorite part of that. Like Me that, too. That Me is, too. put him up the pot. Okay, yeah. I, I want to actually say that because literally every time I hear that song, I get excited for that because it feels like Kendrick is like, he's like almost charging up and then that's when he's like, nah, fuck this nigga. It's over with for you. Yeah. I'm pissed now. Yeah. Like, fire, fire. You know what? Interesting. Because I do think I was going to change it. I was going to put a cut off the Thames album. And I was going to do Free Fall, but... I almost put that on my list, too. I do want to switch it for Me and You. Because it's funny. I heard a Me and You remix online that had Drake's part on it. Yeah. And I listened to that verse, and I was like, this verse, while surface level melodically sounds good, the subject matter of it is just not on topic at all yeah not on topic at all and really actually ruined the song almost disrespectful so when i went back and listened to me and you by thames i was like what a beautiful song that she wrote right just another ballad type anthem but i think the way that she's talking about love and the way that she's talking about just like a personal relationship with somebody else is beautiful in there something about hearing that remix uh made me feel like man this song has a lot more longevity to me than free fall right now and it's a song that i have been listening to the whole year um beautiful cut from her album songwriting ability you know times is amazing bro and number six i have bodyguard by beyonce um this is the one that i continue to go back to on cowboy carter and continue to really enjoy um i think it's well written i think there's an incredible amount of energy that all funnels into the into the chorus and the chorus is super fun um i think when there's two different parts of the song when the bass line really comes in and the payoff at those two moments for me is just like incredibly high and i think it's super fun music that you can play around literally anyone so i've been i've been slapping that a lot this year so that's my number six my number six song of the year is nights like this future and metro boomin i think that future one of my favorite artists ever and this is why this nigga was singing for three minutes of this four minute song was not rapping was crooning beautifully about this it's the best late night driving music i think that the way that future goes from this amazing singing at the beginning to rapping some of the most real shit ever about this relationship about how he's been hurt you know what i mean i love when future gets vulnerable yeah and i think that he did that throughout this album but this song you hear the emotion really, really in the delivery. Like, mm -hmm. And then Metro Boomin just sets the tone perfectly with the horns going throughout. It's it's a beautifully done song from top to bottom, and I think it really shows what these two can do at their peak creatively when they're not doing the shit that we all know they do so well. My number six pick is Saturn by SZA. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that's what I should have put yeah. instead of fucking Get It Sexy. Yeah, that's a great song. Fuck! <laughs> Fuck, I thought about that. Well, Miles, Miles and Spencer, I'd love your input on this. I think y'all are definitely like bigger and like more in-depth SZA fans than me. But what a what a beautiful song and like what a sleeper hit. Yeah. Too. Yeah. This joint has been on the Billboard charts for weeks. And yeah. just silently. Because I do feel like it's the type of song that you probably listen to by yourself. It's a little bit more reserved, more laid back, more melodic, just more chill. But like I've been listening to this a lot lately. And so Miles, I want I want to hear your take for real. I mean, because you had you had the uproar earlier. Because I could have actually like spoken. I really I literally thought about the song in the gym today, and I was like, put this on the list. Fuck. Yeah. Um. Uh, you hit get it on the head, bro. SZA is so incredible that now she can drop songs like this, and we don't even recognize. You know what I mean? But everybody's a SZA fan. She has reached universal mass appeal, superstar status. Everyone has a SZA song in their phone, and this is like a warm hug. This song literally just uh -huh. feels like it's going to be okay. You know what uh, I mean? Yeah. Like, we all go through it. We all need time away. Shit gets hectic. Like, she's so real and, like, isn't, like, she doesn't overcomplicate with her lyrics, you know? This yeah. is, like, it is what it is. You know what I mean? I'm going through it. You're going through it. I would love to just get away. You know what I mean? My head is somewhere else right now. I'm not even focused on all the crazy shit. Of the, I, dope. Just beautifully written. Beautifully written. It's time for the top five. The five best songs of the year so far from it's me, really Spencer, big. Miles, and Osei. Um, at number five, I have Like That by Future and Metro Boomin. 
Um, one of the biggest songs of the year, I think a song that you could not miss no matter who you were or where you frequented, you know, you're hearing this shit. And it's also the song that really blew up the biggest moment in music this year, which was this rap mm -hmm. civil war, this Kendrick Lamar versus Drake beef. You know, and it all really started. People say it started with first person shooter, but it really started with Kendrick's verse on like that. 100%. Um, hearing Kendrick come in while we're giving We Don't Trust You the first listen was one of the best moments of music for me this year um just obviously features hidden you know you don't know that and then it's just the goat you know on a on a crazy on one of metro's best beats ever i had no idea the shock value of that the first time i heard it was crazy yeah and the song is just great too it's not like everyone just knows kendrick's verse you know what i mean my top five songs of the year at number five is from here no worries featuring yep. october london and snoop dogg Spencer, you shared the moment with me, actually. I had just gone through a very, very stressful week. Obviously, we work in music and shit gets very... You you lose your creativity a little bit. And I heard this song in a very stressed moment, and it reinvigorated me and literally like brought me back to life when it came to listening to music. Yeah. And just excited my passion again. I think I literally said that like, I'm frustrated that someone else made something so beautiful, and I don't know how... I, like, if I could do... If I'm capable of that, October London steals the show. I thought it might yeah. have been a sample the first time I heard it. No, that's just his fucking incredible voice. Obviously, Anderson and Knowledge across the whole project do great, but I think they chose this as a single for a reason because it's not a hit, but it's just so undeniable from the moment you hear it. It's like someone's got to like this. You know what I mean? I'm not going to make it the first thing I drop. Yeah. I'll give this, I think this was the last single before the project. Yeah, right? I mean, technically they dropped the Earl song like three days before, but it's yes. like the last real single. Yeah, this shit is just beautiful from start to finish so happy that i got to experience this yeah great song my number five is witchy by k Trinata and childish gambino yes sir yes sir bro this to me represents everything about childish gambino that we know and love yes. and i think miles you hit it on the head best when you said it on the pod it's like or i guess when we did the reaction to it it's like when you like put some guardrails up for him and you like structure a lane for him childish gambino is arguably like one of the best artists of our generation you know because yep. it's just like his mind his creative mind is so good i think sometimes he gets lost in that and just you know he's so talented he just kind of does whatever uh i think what bigfoot little foot that's just doing whatever to me <laughs> you bro. know what i mean because he's he could do whatever he's so talented yeah it's like i'm gonna try this and it's not gonna sound bad mm -hmm. and maybe the attempt art he's a true artist he's yeah. a throwback he's a renaissance man but then this and then the moment when he comes out with tyler at coachella and he's running out of time and it's like oh my god when you give him a producer who knows how to bring him to the highest heights mm -hmm. he's maybe the best person in music right now mm -hmm. the great song and his singing voice i don't know why it always surprises me that he has like an amazing like the falsetto range. singing voice. Oh my like, god, one of the best voices. Yeah. One his of the best voices. Falsetto in music. though is different because you would never expect it from him. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's uh, incredible, incredible talent. You keep stepping on all my picks because my number four song is Witchy by Kate. Ah, oh, let's featuring, talk about featuring it. Featuring Childish Gambino. Let's talk about it. Um, man, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a lot yeah. of fun and a song that you know is the easiest thing to click on in the whole world. Um, I'm loving this Gambino rollout. I wasn't disappointed by Atavista, even though I do I have a couple gripes with the with the rework, but we got human sacrifice, which I love. And to me it really was just the start of a rollout. It, I didn't think he was trying to it was, it was a physical release and the start of a rollout. And then he did Coachella, mm -hmm. and that moment brought a tear to my eye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was incredible. And then we get Witchy, which is the best thing he's done this year. Yes. Um, you know, K Trinata has a certain K, K, K Trinata has a certain energy that we have all felt. We have to talk about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, honestly, this is just like it embodied. And you can run K Trinata tapes and just feel this vibe. But when you also get like a crazy vocal performance to kind of complement that vibe, and someone that is so in line with everything I think is going through K Trinata's head when he's making these beats, you yeah. know what I mean? In Donald Glover, it seemed like a perfect pairing and. Just like the whole like witchy thing, I fucking love you know you being a little witchy. Like I think that yeah. I think you know because K. Trinata and Gambino are both kind of these um, like mysterious, almost you know almost like godlike musicians. You know what I'm saying? They're just in their lane. They do it perfectly. Everyone knows like they are the ones. You know, mm -hmm. so to kind of lean into that with the concept for the song just made it all the better. 
My number four song of the year is Fisher, Cash Cobain, and Bay Swag. Hey. I think that we've heard the rumblings from Cash for a minute. I think that he has easily the best producer tag in the game. So you know when he, when a Cash beat comes on, it's it's something that is an energy. You know what I mean? It is a dance. It is what New York is now, which is cool, which is fun. It represents the full resurgence of an entire city, and they needed it. Because mm -hmm. I think that New York is so much bigger than I think what we've kind of made it out to be since there's been like Biggie was before our time, Jay-Z was before our time. This is him taking over the city, and I think from that first time you hear the beat, it's like, got an attitude, but she bad as shit, so I ain't mad at you. He... He toned down the slizzy a little bit while yeah. still being himself. And I think that that's why I love this song so much. Because I like Cash Cobain and I'm able to see the artistry of it and the funness of it. But I can acknowledge that sometimes it gets a little raunchy. You know what I mean? He walks that line perfectly on this song while being fun. And I would be crazy to not mention what Bass Swag does. Yeah. I don't know as much from Bass Swag. This is literally the first time I ever heard him. But boy, like he, he holds his own. And is really, really pushing the song forward. I love how it makes you wait for the drop. That's so fun to me because yeah. like you almost get used to what it is and you're like, fine, if it stays here the rest of the time, cool. You know what I mean? But that drop reinvigorates you, breathes new life into the song. It's it's, a ba it's amazing for Cash Cobain. I'm so happy that he's having this moment. My number four is Luna by Fade and ATL Jacob. Okay. This song is infectious. Yeah. Like, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you understand Spanish or not. When you hear this and when you hear those drums, bro, it makes you want to dance. It makes you want to get up. It makes you want to just party and have a good time. And I think one thing to me that's so clever about this is I'm really just getting hip to fade, right? Like Same. I literally was doing research on him yesterday. I knew almost nothing about him, but I keep seeing his name everywhere. Um, you know, Colombian singer coming up under Jay Balvin, all that type stuff. But I think the ATL Jacob part is what makes it so interesting to me. How did they meet? What's the story there? Are these two producers linking up? Because I think Fade is also a producer mm -hmm. and artist. Um like, what's the story there? And how does ATL Drake, Jacob make, like, this, like, Latin hit? You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Infectious song. There's really no reason for me to put it up up there other than that I just love it and I hear it everywhere. And I think anybody can enjoy it. At number three, I've got Lunch by Billie Eilish. Okay. Um, Big Billy. Like, like a perfect pop song. You know what I mean? Tell me, like, from the, from the moment you heard this, you're like, yo, this is... This is everything that Billie Eilish has been working towards for mm -hmm. so long, just perfectly in one song. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's extremely catchy. It showcases her voice. And it's also the perfect amount of edge to add to her career, to make her, like, even cooler than she already was. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Like, really having Billie, like, in her gay era, <laughs> I think, honestly, is is really fire. And I think it's, like, a great look for her. And not that it's a look. You know no, I mean? no, it's tasteful. But, it's but tasteful. Yeah, to, to, to open up and talk about that in the interview and then on the project, mm -hmm. which was probably her best project ever, too. Yeah. You know, um, I really I I really think it was a genius career move. And there's just there's there's crack in this song. As somebody that doesn't even like this kind of music, can't stop listening to it. It's and addicting. It, and it does feel like we're watching someone grow up before our eyes and find themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's why like the stuff about her sexuality comes up and it does feel like we're just unpeeled. Like it's, it's another layer. Yeah. You know what I mean? To Billie Eilish, another thing for her to talk about in a very intelligent way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause I think a lot of people who are probably going through and dealing with the same things that she did are going to look up to her and be like, wow, like it's okay. I have someone who like it can help me navigate this lane. So yeah, my number three song of the year is like that future Metro Boomin and Kendrick Lamar. Gotta be there. Probably my, maybe my favorite first listen of the year yeah. i i don't think i'll ever be able to replicate the excitement i felt when i heard one of the best rappers ever getting on one of my favorite rappers like track i don't know i would have never thought kendrick lamar and future on a future album you know what i mean i could see kendrick maybe tapping him and be like he really came into future of metro's world i think we cannot highlight metro Boomin enough Metro Boomin, I think, with those horns, with how explosive the track is off the beginning, we knew it was going to be great. Yeah. If it would have just been a future of Metro Boomin song, it could have been amazing. And that's why I put it a little bit higher than Not Like Us. Because while that was obviously maybe the bigger moment, this is a song that I think will live on forever. And it doesn't even revolve around beef or drama or anything like that. It's just fucking dope. 
Kendrick Lamar, even the way that he took his shots at Drake were still subtle enough to where it's like, this could really be applicable to how anyone is feeling. You know what I mean? These yeah. people talking shit, you know what I mean? Keep my name out your mouth, all that shit. So I, them at the highest level again. Shout out Future Metro for getting one of the biggest moments of the year and still delivering. My number three song is Places to Be by Fred again, Anderson, Pac, and Chica. And I know what you're oh, thinking. Wow. I know what you're thinking. When does Osei listen to Fred again? When does Osei listen to EDM? Why is he saying this? <laughs> yeah. What's the motive? That's what I'm thinking. Fred again has come to LA twice now and completely shut it down. And yeah. I think this past weekend was like one of the most interesting uh, performances and concerts that I didn't go and see in person, but saw from videos and, and content. You couldn't and escape the Instagram stories. You couldn't escape it. And it's very rare in music where I just feel like completely out of the loop. You know, I've been hearing about Fred again for what, like over a year now. Yeah. And he's got this massive fan base that, that loves him. Uh, so I went through and listened to some of his catalog, you know, the past two weeks. I think, I think creatively, this is like one of the most interesting and unique songs of the year. I feel like Anderson Pox singing vocals with Chica's rapping over a Fred again beat is just, again, unprecedented, not something I expected, but something that I really love. So that's my take. At number two, um, I have From Here by No Worries. Oh, um, Miles, Miles already touched on it earlier, but to me, um, the most musical song of the year. The thing that really touched me. Oof, let me not. The thing that really scratched the itch. Oh, the thing that. The thing that really. <laughs> um, what? I can't even say satisfied. Satiated. The thing that really satiated the musician and the music lover in me. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, let's start that over. Um, no, just a really incredible, <laughs> beautiful song. You talked about October London and definitely the star of that show. That vocal performance, um, you know, has been earworm in my head since it came out. But Anderson also is just like at his most dramatic. So dramatic. You know what I mean? Like I'm rolling down the window so the rain hides my tears. You know what I it's mean? It's theatrical. Like, it's super theatrical, but it's done so tastefully. And to have like a spoken outro from Snoop just really stamps it as just like one of the best tracks of the year. But I can't say enough good things about this song and this album. My number two song of the year so far is Witchy, K. Trinata and Childish Gambino. Gambino does his shit. K. Trinata does his shit. But I would have never, I would have never expected them to work together. And I think that that's what really blew my mind because once I heard it, I was like, well, this makes more sense than anything else in the world. Yeah. And K. Trinata always gets one on every project, whether it's 10% with um, Cali or um, even on that one, Worst With Me with Tanache, uh, You're the One with Sid. He knows how to bring the best out of people, it seems like no other, but he also handpicks the features. Mm -hmm. Like he's not going to go get just a random person who's hot right now. It's going to be who perfectly fits the song that I'm making. And I think Gamb him having the right song for Gambino led to debatably maybe the best. It was hard not to put this number one yeah. just because it's so upbeat. Like it makes me want to dance, but also it makes me feel really good. Yeah. Like I want to hear this all the time. It's super playable, super earwormy. It's the best produced track of the year, I think, maybe. Amazing. Great song. My number two is a song that we've all already mentioned, but I am putting it up there. Euphoria by Kendrick Lamar. Mm. And wow. I, and I think, you know, I think when we talk about top songs, it's, you know, sometimes I lean a little bit more into like the like melodic, like easy listening stuff. This to me is one of the best songs of the year. Not only because of the song structure, not only because of the beat, which honestly grew on me because I was, I was hating on the beat at first. Mm -hmm. But shit. Carter Got Wings did his shit on it. But it's just, it's so clever. And it's a six minute song that is the beginning of dismantling yes. Drake and his whole character. Yeah. What is it? The braids? That is one of the funniest lines of the year. And bro, it's just got so many quotables, bro. I think I love it when he breaks down his accent, his yeah. Canadian accent. Yeah. The title of the song is uh, Euphoria, which as we all know, Drake is an executive producer on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's so many like little bits and pieces. Oh, and the beginning. The when Richard he, Pryor, bro. Yeah, yeah. The beginning when he reverses uh, 
that you know, I'm, that a fraud. Right, I'm a fraud. I'm a fraud. That's insane. Right. It's it's crazy and like you know I'm missing so many things right now. But I think that just speaks to the fact that Kendrick is just a genius when it comes my, to things. My favorite part of the song and maybe the beef is how we all. I think we all knew that it turned up when Euphoria dropped. Mm-hmm. How he walked him down to start the song. Mm-hmm. It's like hey. We have clearly both decided that this is the path we're going down. So I'm just going to let you know, Drake, in the most calmest way possible. You're going to die. It's over for you. And I'm going to enjoy every second of it. But you brought this out of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't want to do this to you. And I think that's the coldest way anyone has really like fully engaged in a beef. All right. Those were our top 19. One remains for all three of us. We got our best song of the year coming up next after this commercial break. That was dumb. Put a commercial. <laughs> this is where we can put the ad in. I liked it. <laughs> My song of the year so far in 2024 is Not Like Us by Kendrick Lamar. This was without a doubt the biggest moment of the year. You know what I mean? And there's just so many reasons why this is the this is the best song to come out in 2024. And we can start with just the song itself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? DJ Mustard. Bro, like bringing the just LA bounce out. back, bro. One of the most fun, like off rip. When you, As soon as you hear that first note, you're turned. You're 100% turned. Kendrick's delivery on this thing, perfect, bro. Yeah. Literally perfect. Everyone knows all of it. I was listening to it in my car yesterday <laughs> after literally it being played, it being shoved down my throat <laughs> for two two months, however long it's been out. And I was smiling, like rapping yeah. in the car by myself, like getting hyped yeah. off a song I've heard a million yeah. times already. This is like, it was it was one of his number ones, which was a huge moment for him. This was the moment when Kendrick Lamar, I think truly, undisputedly, became the best rapper ever because he ended maybe the biggest rapper ever's career with this song. And you hear it outside. It took over the internet. The memes were hilarious, but they never took away from the song. They always seemed like they were uplifting like Kendrick and his ability. Yeah. You know what I mean? And to me, it's, it's just undisputably the song of the year. My number one song of the year is Praise John the Moonlight by YG Marley. I think that in the overall scheme of the year, taking account of beef obviously being so prevalent, I think obviously all the things that are happening in real life, got like an election coming up, all that. This song is like love, peace, unity, all of that. Came out right after the Bob Marley movie or right around the same time. And I think it really was crazy to see a grandson, right? Yeah, I think so. Bob Marley embodying the same spirit of what he did for so many years. And I think when we, when the way you talked about Exodus in our albums of the year video, go watch that. I think a lot of that goes to this song. You know what I mean? Like everyone could get behind this message and no one's going to get mad at it. Then the beautifully done Cole Bennett video Mm -hmm. didn't have to do all the effects, didn't have to do all the extra shit, but really showcased where he's from and his people. And then seeing Lauren be in the video in the background and like that reveal and just how happy they are together. It's such an uplifting song. Every time I hear it, it puts a smile on my face. It feels like I'm listening to it for the first time every single time I hear it. Really, really love it. I think you can play it for anyone of all ages, you know? My number one song of the year so far is Hood by Air by Playboy Cardi. That song is a moment, an anthem. And honestly, I don't, I feel like Cardi doesn't want to be successful, bro. Because I remember the beginning of the year when he was doing that rollout, bro. The man had the world captivated. And that was by far the best song of the rollout to me. And I just saw it played at Summer Smash. Just saw how it impacted the crowd and the and the movement. It's not even an official release song, bro. And it's an anthem already. I don't know, bro. I would really like Cardi to continue this rollout. We need that in our lives. Yeah, bro. Hood by Air is just an undeniable anthem. It's a fire song. Fire song, bro. I didn't count any of the Playboy Cardi stuff because none of it's been officially released. But all of the shit that he's dropped has been fire. Yeah. My my pick out of the bunch would probably be Backrooms or 2024 music. Probably Backrooms. But I'm not mad at that. That's a great fucking song. I'm so excited for the album. Amazing song. And bro. the performance was crazy. Mm-hmm. The performance smash. looked nuts. Mm-hmm. Okay, wow. That's that's our top that's our top 20 songs of the year. Like, share, comment, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Yeah. Catch on the next one. What was your favorite song of 2024? Let us know in the comments down below. Catch on the next one. Peace.